Good morning. Uh, as Dr. Mitchell said, I'm Dr. Paul Cuban. I teach in the electrical department. I also teach some classes for our mechatronics program. Um, thank you all for coming. I especially would like to thank our industrial liaisons, uh, particularly Toyota, who's uh, provided our students with lots of great opportunities, co-ops and internships, and these real-world projects. Um, this next student that I'm about to announce uh, is kind of special because I've known him since he was about this big <laughs> and we're really good friends with his family. So it's my pleasure to announce Landon Oliver. Hi, I'm Landon Oliver. Uh, my project was bumper sub-assembly and safety productivity improvement, uh, and the company I worked with was Toyota. A uh, little overview, I'm gonna go over some background, identify the problem, options, the considered designs, uh, economic considerations, project benefit and outcomes, conclusion, acknowledgements, and then some questions. So a little background about myself. I'm studying mechatronics engineering. Uh, I've been at Toyota since May 2011 in the plastics pilot engineering department, and I've done five co-op terms with Toyota. Toyota Motor Manufacturing Indiana produces the Toyota Highlander. The new 2014 Highlander uh, is produced in, in Princeton, Indiana. This was a new model launch. So with this new model, it was to be exported to overseas countries. So th these vehicles must comply with the multiple regulations from these different countries. Uh, the, the multiple regulations for these countries created many new front and rear bumper options. Uh, different lighting regulations led to multiple fog light options. Different corrosion regulations led to multiple chrome grille options and different license plate regulations led to multiple license plate bracket options. So with these multiple options, uh, with the 2014 model launch, a manual sub-assembly line was implemented. Uh, this picture shows the manual sub-assembly line. It used ball roller tables and bumpers on trays. Uh, <coughs> the team member would pull the tray into their work zone assemble the needed options and then they would push the tray into the next zone. Circled in red here shows that this was creating an ergonomic burden on the team members back and shoulders. Uh, this chart shows the back and shoulder discomforts that team members reported from tray handling. Uh, in 2013, in the, the entire year there were only two back and shoulder issues. That was before this line was implemented. And in 2014, this is broken down by month, there were many more. So the purpose of this project was to reduce team member tray handling, with the focus items being ergonomics to reduce back and shoulder strain, uh, productivity to reduce waste from pushing and pulling trays, and to continue to produce quality parts. The target situation would be to completely eliminate all tray handling, where rather than pulling and pushing trays, there would be just a button push to bring the tray into the team member's zone, then they could assemble the bumper, and then a button push to cycle the tray to the next zone. So currently, there is six seconds tray handling per vehicle, and this was contributing to 5.8 back and shoulder issues per month, and the target would be two seconds of tray handling per vehicle with zero back and shoulder issues per month. This meant that we needed to reduce four seconds of tray handling time and eliminate 5.8 back and shoulder issues. The options we considered were pneumatic rollers. Uh, pneumatic rollers couldn't be added in the actual workstations because of a safety concern. So this would eliminate the pull time because the rollers would push the tray into the zone but the team members would still have to push the tray onto the pneumatic roller in the next zone, so it would not eliminate the push time. 
and it was also a safety concern because once the pneumatic rollers were started, if something were to get in their way, uh, it's difficult to stop the rollers immediately. Next, we considered full automation. This would eliminate uh, pushing and pulling, and sensors would be placed at each zone to uh, stop the conveyor if the team member were to enter the zone while it was moving. Next, we considered automated guided vehicles. Uh, these, would, the bumpers would sit on these and drive from workstation to workstation. The problem with these is they're a slow cycle time, uh, safety concern, and we did not have enough room in our layout for the routes. So this shows a countermeasure selection matrix. Uh, this is a common matrix to Toyota. It is used uh, to judge different options and it assigns a point value based on safety, cost, productivity, and feasibility. And the judgment symbols are a circle is good, triangle is okay, and an X is no good. So for pneumatic rollers, uh, it was low on safety, low on cost, medium on productivity, and medium on feasibility. For the full automation option, it was high on safety, medium on cost, high on productivity, and high on feasibility. And for the automated guided vehicles, was low on safety, medium on cost, low on productivity, and low on feasibility. So after this judgment, we went uh, with full automation for our design. So the, the design of the conveyor was based on multiple standards. Most of these standards were safety standards. Uh, the conveyor height was set to 950 millimeters. This was an ergonomic working height that worked for team members of varying heights. The conveyor speed was set based on the needed cycle times of four second reduction. The roller spacing was set to 100 millimeters to eliminate pinch and shear points. That way a team member could not get their finger or hand caught in between the rollers. A, a voltage standard stated that no more than 24 volts can exit a control panel. This is why we designed the drive rollers to run on 24 volts. Uh, to correspond with a push force standard, we used zero touch palm switches to cycle the trays. This could have caused, if we were to use push buttons, it could cause an ergonomic burden for repetitive push force because there are approximately 800 bumpers cycled per shift. So that would be a lot of button pushing. So the zero force palm switches eliminated this concern. Safety fencing was added at all non-work zones to prevent team members from entering the zone when the tray is moving. And safety scanners were added at all workstations. These safety scanners were mounted overhead and they project a beam down over the workstation. Therefore, if the team member enters the workstation while the conveyor is moving, uh, it will fault the conveyor to prevent a safety incident. And the next standard was productivity, and this was that the cycle time needed to be reduced by four seconds. Other considerations is that we had a unique tray. Uh, the tray had to be large enough to hold the bumper in the wings up position, which is as shown. Uh, therefore, the, the wings didn't overhang from the tray and would be able to run into something. And the tray also weighed 100 pounds. This, this meant that uh, we couldn't just order a standard conveyor system off the shelf. It had to be a custom conveyor system. And our other consideration was we had limited floor space, so we went with a rectangular conveyor desi design to utilize our, uh, our footprint. So here is the conveyor design. Uh, it's divided into 14 zones. The workstations are zone 2, 4, 7, 9, 11, and 14. The bumper is loaded uh, at zone 14 onto its tray. It then traverses down to 2 and to 4 where options are uh, 
uh, added, and then it goes up to seven and back down to 11. The tray's then unloaded, or the bumper is then unloaded from the tray at 11 and taken to the next uh, process. And the empty trays come from 11 to 14 where another bumper is then loaded. At each work zone, there are two drive rollers shown here in black and a proximity switch to indicate that there is a part present. At the work zones, there are a safety scanner, a stack light to indicate to the team member uh, when it is safe to enter the zone, and a palm switch to cycle the tray. And the corner zones were uh, somewhat unique that the tray had to come down this way and then traverse 90 degrees. So pop-up transfers uh, were added. There are belts that rise up in between the rollers and uh, traverse the tray back to 90 degrees. Here is a picture of the conveyor being built in our trial area. In this trial area, we were able to assemble the entire system before we put it into production. That way we could do debugging and training without uh, interrupting any of the, act of the actual production. So although the, the main goal for this project was safety, there were also economic considerations. A Toyota requires a two year payback. So the results were four seconds of cycle time reduced. Uh, that times 800 vehicles per day is 3,200 seconds, which is equivalent to about 53 minutes. This 53 minutes uh, would contribute uh, overtime, which cost the company approximately $8,000 per day. So that gave a payback period of one and a half months. So the project benefits and outcome uh, that they were mainly safety. The ergonomic issue was removed. After this conveyor was implemented, zero back and shoulder issues were contributed to tray handling because it was completely eliminated. And the pinch and shear points were also removed. Another benefit was productivity, that four seconds of cycle time was reduced. So here's a short video. Maybe it won't run, but here's the, this is the corner section here. Um, the, the tray is coming. There's a workstation up at the top here. The tray traverses down this path. These are the pop-up transfers. They raise up when the tray, when this tray gets to right here, and then the tray can come on those belts there. The team member then uh, assembles the bumper. When they're done, they touch this palm switch right here. The, the transfer belts drop down and the conveyor kicks on and pushes the tray that way. So in conclusion, Toyota's key focus is to keep its team members safe and produce quality vehicles. This project improved both the safety and productivity of the front and rear bumper sub-assembly process. Uh, I'd like to give a special thanks to everyone at Toyota Motor Man Manufacturing Indiana uh, especially my mentor, Brent Hartz, um, my advisor, Dr. Paul Cuban, the rest of the engineering faculty, and our administrative, administrative assistant, Don Moore. Any questions? Questions? No questions? Oh, we got one in the back. We, we actually, we did a lot of feedback from the floor. Um, obviously, the, the people on the floor were in uh, agreement that something needed to happen from all the back and shoulder issues that were occurring. Uh, so, yeah, there, there was a lot of discussion with the, with the team members on, on what their thoughts were, and we used a lot of their ideas when coming up with
There was a drawing of like a floor plan. Mm -hmm. Was that, can you tell us what software that was drawn in and did you participate in the drawing and layout of that? Uh, I didn't I didn't create that drawing. I created a uh, preliminary drawing before that. That drawing was actually created by the, the conveyor company uh, that that we work, we work directly with their engineering department since it was a custom conveyor. So I didn't actually create the drawing, but we had many meetings with their engineering group and working with them in creating that drawing. Any other questions? I want to thank you. I'm Brent Hart, uh, Landon's liaison. Uh, basically, I'm an assistant manager at Toyota and Plastics, and uh, Landon did a very good job. He is on stage right now, so it's maybe a little difficult to think on his feet, but uh, he did a lot of planning. He did. He met uh, with production, engineering, maintenance, um, management to get buy-off on the project. He set up daily meetings, made very well, very good plans, worked in AutoCAD uh, to put the project layout together. And uh, the agreement does take a little while in our process. Uh, so he did work on that for a long time. And uh, he did meet with his advisors and uh, many different groups. If uh, any of you have been at Toyota, it's, it's a big place and a lot of communication is required. So uh, please, uh, hopefully you guys can get some internships and learn how to set up plans and use the data and work with designers and also the uh, fabrication companies that are making special products for you. Hopefully that some of the classes you learn here will help with that process. But the communication is key, especially from the engineering group in the future. So I'd like to thank Landon and, and USI. We've had uh, quite a good success with hiring out of here the last few years. And there's quite a bit more, uh, basically, capacity coming to TMMI, so uh, please be positive and work with us in the future. Well, thank you. Any other? All right, let's give him a hand.